Today, as you listen, watch for the story quote that will appear on screen. Write it down word by word, and then follow the instructions given to you by your teacher. Hi, my name is Amanda Zeba. Welcome to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd, and another First Chapter Friday video. Today, I'm going to be reading you actually the first couple chapters of the book, The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo. And uh, this book is an oldie, uh, but a goodie. It was published in 2003. And as you can see from this bright, shiny gold seal here, it won the Newbery Award in that book. Um, if you have not read this book or any books by Kate DiCamillo, you are in for a supreme treat. Not only are her books just lovely, lovely stories, but her word choice makes reading it, um, it's almost a delicious experience. Her words sound so beautiful when you read them out loud, and hopefully you'll get that a little bit in the first couple chapters that I read to you. Um, my copy of the book does not have the blurb on the back, so I'm just going to switch screens here real quick and read for you uh, what it would say if it was on the back. Welcome to the story of Despero Tilling, a mouse who is in love with music, stories, and a princess named P. It is also the story of a rat called Roscuro, who lives in the darkness and covets a world filled with light. And it is the story of Midgery Sow, a slow-witted serving girl who harbors a simple, impossible wish. These three characters are about to embark on a journey that will lead them down into a horrible dungeon, up into a glittering castle, and ultimately into each other's lives. What happens then? As Kate DiCamillo would say, reader, it is your destiny to find out. With black and white illustrations and a refreshed cover by Timothy Basil Earing, this story is one you will love. So, without any further ado, let's dive in. The world is dark and light is precious. Come closer, dear reader. You must trust me. I am telling you a story. Book the first, A Mouse is Born. Chapter one, the last one. This story begins within the walls of a castle with the birth of a mouse, a small mouse, the last mouse born to his parents and the only one of his litter to be born alive. Where are my babies? Said the exhausted mother when the ordeal was through. Show me to my babies. The father mouse held one small mouse up high. There is only this one, he said. The others are dead. Mon Dieu, just the one baby mouse? Just the one. Will you name him? All that work for nothing, said the mother. She sighed. It is so sad. It is such the disappointment. She was a French mouse who had arrived at the castle long ago in the luggage of a visiting French diplomat. Disappointment was one of her favorite words. She used it often. Will you name him? repeated the father. Will I name him? Will I name him? Of course I will name him. But he will only die like the others. Oh, so sad. Oh, such a tragedy. The mouse mother held a handkerchief to her nose and then waved it in front of her face. She sniffled. I will name him, yes. I will name this mouse Despero for all the sadness, for the many despairs in this place. Now where is my mirror? Her husband handed her a small shard of mirror. The mouse mother, whose name was Antoinette, looked at her reflection and gasped. To Lise, she said to one of her sons, get for me my makeup bag, my eyes are a fright. While Antoinette touched up her eye makeup, the mouse father put Despero down in a bed made of blanket scraps. The April sun, weak but determined, shone through a castle window and from there squeezed itself through a small hole in the wall and placed one golden finger on the mouse. The other older mice children gathered around to stare at Despero. His ears are too big, said his sister Malo. Those are the biggest ears I've ever seen. Look, said a brother named Furlo. His eyes are open. Pa, his eyes are open. They shouldn't be open. It is true. Despero's eyes should not have been open, but they were. He was staring at the sun reflecting off his mother's mirror. The light was shining onto the ceiling in an oval of brilliance, and he was smiling up at the sight. There's something wrong with him, said the father. Leave him alone. Despero's brothers and sisters stepped back. 
away from the new mouse. This is the last, proclaimed Antoinette from her bed. I will have no more mice babies. They are such the disappointment. They are hard on my beauty. They ruin for me my looks. This is the last one. No more. The last one, said the father. And he'll be dead soon. He can't live. Not with his eyes open like that. But reader, he did live. And this is his story. You can see another one of these pictures here. Despero and his mother and his father and brothers and sisters looking on. The caption says Despero's, Despero's eyes should not have been open. Chapter two, such a disappointment. Despero Tilling lived, but his existence was cause for much speculation in the mouse community. He's the smallest one I've ever seen, said his aunt Florence. It's ridiculous. No mouse has ever, ever been this small, not even a Tilling. She looked at Despero through narrowed eyes, as if she expected him to disappear entirely. No mouse, she said again. Ever. Despero, his tail wrapped around his feet, stared back at her. Those are some big ears he's got, too, observed his Uncle Alfred. They look more like donkey ears, if you ask me. They are obscenely large, said his Aunt Florence. Despero wiggled his ears. His Aunt Florence gasped. They say... He was born with his eyes open, whispered Uncle Alfred. Despero stared hard at his uncle. Impossible, said Aunt Florence. No mouse, no matter how small or obscenely large-eared, is ever born with his eyes open. It simply isn't done. His pa Lester says he's not well, said Uncle Alfred. Despero sneezed. He said nothing in defense of himself. How could he? Everything his aunt and uncle said was true. He was ridiculously small. His ears were obscenely large. He had been born with his eyes open, and he was sickly. He coughed and sneezed so often that he carried a handkerchief in one paw at all times. He ran temperatures, he fainted at loud noises. Most alarming of all, he showed no interest in things a mouse should show interest in. He did not think constantly of food. He was not intent on tracking down every crumb. While his larger, older siblings ate, Despero stood with his head cocked to one side, holding very still. Do you hear that sweet sound, he said. I hear the sound of cake crumbs falling out of people's mouths and hitting the floor, said his brother to Louise. That's what I hear. No, said Despero. It's something else. It sounds like, um, honey. You might have big ears, said to Louise, but they're not attached right to your brain. You don't hear honey, you smell honey. Where there's honey to smell, where it's, there isn't. Son, barked Despero's father, snap to it. Get your head out of the clouds and hunt for crumbs. Please, said his mother, look for the crumbs. Eat them to make your mama happy. You are such the skinny mouse. You are a disappointment to your mama. Sorry, said Despero. He lowered his head and sniffed the castle floor. But reader, he was not smelling. He was listening with his big ears to the sweet sound that no other mouse seemed to hear. So if you want to find out what happens to Despero and his big ears um, and his family, who's not all that lovely at all, um, you should pick up your copy and read The Tale of Despero. I will put a link down for you in the description box. I hope you have a lovely day and you come back again. Happy reading. Continue reading this Newbery award-winning book, The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo by picking up a copy from your local library, indie bookstore, or through the link in the description box. Today's literary treasure hunt quote says, stories are light, light is precious in a world so dark. Please like this video and subscribe so you can stay connected for more great First Chapter Friday videos and other videos you can use in your classroom. Happy reading.